Hey everyone, it's Mike from SEOTpreneur, and this is a live stream class to help TPT sellers like you do um, work on their TPT blogs. So it's a question and answer kind of format. This is class number nine, uh, and I'm going to walk through what I do to do keyword research for my TPT blog. And so to give you some context, what I'm going to do is um, I, I'm going to do stuff for my EduCircles blog because I'm niching down into my, uh, we've had some conversations on the live streams about the difference between niching down and being generalist kind of, generalist versus specialist. Uh, and my gut tells me based on my experience chatting with TPT sellers at TPT Forum, uh, TPT Forward, there's a YouTube video about that and also listening to Alex Hermosi, but there's a phrase, the riches are in the niches, niches, niches. So this is the idea that if we niche down, we can um, target our messaging much more to our specific customer avatar to the point that the people we're talking to know exactly we make content for them and it helps build trust. Um, it helps build, uh, show our experience in our TPT product niche. It helps uh, give us the expertise, credibility, and it shows authority in this area. And that's why I have a TPT blog. That's why I have this YouTube channel. That's why I have the SEOTpreneur community. Uh, and so I, if you're like us in the SEOTpreneur pro forum, and actually I should rename that SEOT Premier, rather than call it a pro form, I think I might call it a staff room because um, we were talking about it today. It's kind of like a staff room. Like when you teach in the classroom, you can go to the staff room and chat with people. Whereas if you teach on TPT or if you create content on TPT, it's all you by yourself behind a computer. And so it's nice just to check in and chat with real people. And I find people in the SEOT Premier community, the one who, um, who stick around, they're the ones who engage, they chat at the meetings, or if they can't make the meetings, they chat in the forums or they, it's a community for them, right? And so when I, when I see us in, in our, um, when we had our Zoom chat this morning, I know that we will win, right? So I'm thinking about me, but I'm also thinking about the other people in the group, as long as we don't give up, right? It's a long journey. And what I've heard from other entrepreneurs in the space and outside the space is eventually you're running and you're running and you're running and the wheels finally hit traction and then you take off, right? So that's what we're working for right now. We're not seeing necessarily huge gains. Sometimes it takes forever, but the idea is if you don't give up, eventually you will win. Okay, so today what I'm going to talk about is this keyword research. And um, the big takeaway is if you're walking, um, if you are talking, um, if you're watching this video, understand that if you go to SEOTpreneur.com, okay, and if you scroll up to the top here where it says seller tools, free TPT seller keyword. See, I think, oh, I need to make the menus wider. And I do, but I sort of have to pick and choose priorities, right? So Everything will get done. You just can't do everything all at the same time. But if you go up here, TPT Seller Tools, and you click on that free TPT Seller keyword here, this episode 22 walks in detail what I do. And also, I will do this for you. I am willing to give away 500 free keyword reports. I've given away maybe 10. So information about what to do is on here. Um, but I'm literally going to do this process for me. Uh, because there's an opportunity right now in Ontario where there's a new language curriculum and my content fits perfectly with that. It's exactly the way that I teach. And so, hey, Ibrahim, um, what, what I'm going to do right now is because I, I'm making a decision on my store uh, and I am at the, I'm at the hamster hawk game, right? I, I think of myself as a hawk at this point of the game. Um, but whether you're a hamster or a hawk, Eventually, what you start to do, what I think we need to do is stop, stop tinkering and trying, oh, I'm going to try this, I'm going to try that. If you're still a tadpole, if you haven't gotten a lot of sales yet, if you don't personally know what your niche is yet, then yeah, there's value to tinkering. But understand that when we tinker in different things, we're not building that expertise. So the idea is to go a mile deep as opposed to a mile wide, right? And that's the value to niching. And so I am going to niche down. I know my resources are sold around the world because you can tell that from TPT seller data where the products are purchased. Uh, and so I know literally my products are sold around the world. And what I'm saying is I'm going to niche down to Ontario, which is a tiny, tiny spot right where this is. And my thinking is 
yes, I might lose some customers from other parts of the world because they'll look at my resource and say, I'm not Ontario grade six, seven, or eight. But it means that if you're Ontario grade six, seven, eight, you are going to know exactly that my product is for you. Now, let's be honest. Um, I wish I had a time machine and future Mike could come back here and say, Mike, dude, forget about, um, you know, hedging your bets and, and doing what you're going to talk about right now. Focus just on grade six, seven, and eight. What I'm going to do is, is in my products, I'm going to say like Ontario literacy 2023, but I'm also going to mention how the, it connects to the, um, the common core, which is the U S state standards, right? Because it does. Um, so I, I'm going to focus on my niche, but I'm going to hedge my bets. All right. So what I need to do is I need to figure out, okay, I, I want to create content on my blog so that I can rank for teachers looking for my niche. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with SEMrush. And if you're just joining us, if you're watching the replay, just remember that if you go to seotpreneur.com or if you go to episode 22, it talks about how I will do a free keyword report just like what I'm going to do right now. So I'm going to go to SEMrush. I have a paid account. You don't need a paid account because I can do a free report for you. Uh, and in the research here, I can choose the database. So yes, SEMrush is expensive. I know some of the other TPT sellers I chat with, what they'll do is they'll use, um, they use, uh, what's his name? Neil Patel has one. Um, um, Uber suggest, right? And and they were saying that the data looks similar. I've never used Uber suggest, but I bet you for the American market, I bet you probably the data is pretty similar. Uh, Semrush, I love the the interface. I love it's just familiar, so I'm going with what I have that's familiar. But so, um, but I could do research in the United Kingdom or Australia or Germany, France, Spain. I'm actually going to go to Canada because I'm in Canada. And so I'm going to search up Ontario language 2023. Let's see what happens. And if I just hit search. I could search for a specific province or community, but I'm not going to niche down like that. So I see there are no metrics. Um, and then there are 11 keyword ideas. Hey, here we go. So right away, I see that there are some keyword variations that might be some interesting things for me. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Um, I'm going to copy this. So when someone says, hey, Mike, can you make a keyword report for me? The very first thing I do is I go to SUTpreneur and I go to 500 Pro Reports and I have a forced copy of this page. And um, if you go to the website, SUTpreneur or episode 22, it talks about how to get this forced copy. But I'm going to make this forced copy and I'm going to say, um, Mike, copy and I'm going to say language 2023, Ontario. So I'm going to do some keyword research for you, um, or for me rather, and I can do this for you too. So I'm going to look at these keyword variations. So this is niche. There's not a lot in here yet. Um, and so when I get this data, I am going to export this. So let's export this as a CSV. It saves it to my computer. Let's just save it here. Um, I'm going to save it to my computer, and then I'm going to open it up. And I get these keywords. Where did you open up? Here we go. And not a lot of data so far, right? I'm going to copy that. And all I do is I go into the Google Sheet. Now, I know that when I do this with clients, when I walk them through it, this part's a little bit intimidating because it's like, whoa, a lot is happening. Um, which is why if this is not your strength, then I can do this for you, right? So, okay. So let's just go over here. I'm going to delete this heading. And so... Uh, uh, let's delete this here. So I have a lot of information in here. Um, in SEMrush, a couple of things. So it'll tell us um, whether the keyword is for information. Like, so SEMrush has an algorithm. If they have a secret sauce. And SEMrush will tell me this information is for someone who is looking to buy, like commercial intent, or this is searching for informational intent, or this is searching for navigational intent. So for example, Right now, people are searching Ontario Language Curriculum 2023 to find the curriculum, right? That's why people are doing it. It's um, So there's a volume number. So this is 390 searches per month in Canada. All right. And that's probably all Ontario. I could niche down, but I'm going to stick. Uh, I don't need to search local metrics. Like I'm not. Maybe I will. Maybe I will search. Okay. Maybe I will search by province. Um, because why am I doing this? I, when I went to TPT Forward, if you watch that video, a lot of like I met a few sellers 
who niched down to their state or province and they were in the third milestone, right? Like 500,000 sales in total. And if it's working for them, it can work for us. So that's why I'm going to niche down to my, my area. Um, but see, if I niche down too much in the data, sometimes the data is not there, but I still see here. So in theory, if I optimize for all of this and I rank number one, I could get 600 visits per month. Okay, so I have this right here. What else do I do? I look for variations of this. I can look for related, but it's not going to show up anything there. So then I play this game. I try to figure out other, um, maybe if I type language 2023, what sh shows up over there? A beautiful life, language 23. So now not everything in here is relevant. Uh, language curriculum 2023, I, I think I already have that. Like if I click on that, what shows up? So this is where the game sort of begins. Oh, but I see 14 keyword variations here. Uh, I'm still on, am I on broad? So I'm going to view all 14 keywords. All right, I'm just going to export that. Uh, let's export this as a CSV. So I play this game where I just download some keywords. All right, and in the CSV, here is the language broad match. All right, so I'm going to copy this. I know that some of this is identical to before, so I'll get rid of duplicates later. So I just paste it into this thing here. There we go. All right, let's get rid of that. So I have some more keywords to play with. All right, trying to come up with other variations. So um, related, anything show up there? Let's see what shows up. Oh, it's thinking about related. Okay, so now it's coming up with some related keywords about this. And so now I'm going to search for that. I'm going to just export all of these. It says 283 keywords. I'm now starting to see when is the new Ontario language curriculum coming out? So in theory, if I write blog content for this, right, then I can start to rank and get traffic. My goal is to become perceived as well as actually to become an expert in teaching Ontario language arts curriculum 2023 for grade seven, eight students in Ontario. I think I have a great story. I think I have great resources. Um, and I think over time, eventually this brand will click and I want to be there. So I want to create content that applies to this. So I'm going to export all of this, export this to CSV. Give it a second to save. Let's save it here. Let's open this up. It's going to open up over here. So I'm looking for keyword variations on this. Let's just copy that. I'm going to go in. I'm going to paste this into my, um, let's paste it there. All right. So some of this will be duplicates. I'll get rid of the duplicates later. I'm trying just to get ideas about this. All right. So um, now let's see if I go language curriculum. This is searching just for Ontario. Oh, no. We lost the Ontario province here. Oh, okay. But it's Canada, which is fine. This is pretty specific here. Uh, okay. So what if I go language, um, Ontario language 2023 lesson? If I search for something broad like that, what happens? Uh, in the related search, nothing shows up. In the broad match, uh, nothing shows up. It's too niche. Okay. So what if I go language lesson? What do I get with that? See, now I'm starting to pull up other things. I bet you if I put in 2023, I'll start to rank a little bit better for that. Um, ooh, lesson plans. Sometimes, so in SEMrush, but all of the research tools, sometimes the search is so niche, there's just a lot, there's not a lot of search volume in it. So for example, something like this, I can see that some of these have zero search volume, right? And then it says for metrics, try to refresh. I can refresh this, but that comes at a cost for me because SEMrush only gives a certain number of refreshes that I can do. So I generally don't speak do it unless I want to get up to date things. But I might, for example, here, grade seven, eight language lesson plans Ontario. I might refresh this to see what the data is. So SEMrush kind of crawls the internet. They ref some of the high traffic volume keywords get refreshed more than others. Um, but sometimes just there isn't refresh data available for that. Um, Hello, why did you stop refreshing? Did you stop refreshing? Okay, let's just see if I can. Oh, it's still thinking. It's, it's, it's okay. So now it refreshed and it figured out the keyword density is 11, very easy, but there's still zero search volume. But I might still, it doesn't mean that no one is searching this topic. It just means that not a lot of people relative to all of Canada are searching for this topic, right? So 
I still might consider searching for it. But if I have to sort of pick and choose what I search for or what I try to go for my blog, I need to be efficient with my time. I am going to, however, export this. So let's export all 24 keywords, save it as a CSV. Here we go. So I'll save this. All right. Um, so now bah, 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 let's open this up. All right. So I'm trying to rank for this new curriculum. See, there's no data in here. Um, but I will paste it into my, uh, oh, I don't want it. Okay. So I'll paste it into my CSV over here. All right. Ooh. So, oh, wait, did that paste? I clearly did not copy it. Let's try this again. Language curriculum. Uh, where's the low one? Did I, did I just close it? I might have. I need to say something right now. I have four viewers on right now. So to the four of you watching right now, you rock. Thank you. I saw two of you in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. For those of you who are watching the replay, ask me questions about your TPT blogs because otherwise I'll talk about what I'm doing. But if you have a very specific question, I find chances are you're not alone and that will help us in um, to sort of have a, a big conversation about where to go with this. But okay, so I'm sorry. I'm just going to open up this CSV. This is a broad match. This here we go. So here's the copy. I see some of these keywords. I saw like Russia in there. That's not relevant for me. So like obviously not everything in here is going to matter, right? Like Dutch lessons, London. That's not going to apply to me. Okay. So now I might I might do um. So I I will do one more thing, but I don't want to. I, I do want to do some analysis part in here. So this is where I ask my robot friend, right? So I have ChatGPT. Um, and I might ask, uh, can you give me some suggestions for keywords uh, to write about the new Ontario 2020, new language arts, Ontario, Ontario language arts language curriculum. Now it has a, uh, it won't be able to give me new things because the time, I, the data set only goes up until, I don't know, September something, something. Right, but see, I look for ideas over here, uh, like Ontario language diverse texts. Maybe this, to be honest, is pretty relevant to the new thing. Like, so it makes me wonder if ChatGPT actually can access the new curriculum. Um, so literacy skills, Ontario. Um, okay, so if I, so this is where it becomes sort of a little bit of an art, a little bit of a game. Uh, Ontario language, Ontario literacy skills lesson. Let's try that. Nothing shows up for broad match. Let's see in related, nothing's going to show up. It's too niche for the general thing. So I have to sort of become more broad. If I go questions, nope. Uh, Ontario literacy skills. What if I get rid of that? Uh, questions, no, all, no, broad match. Literacy and basic skills, 20 reasons why Ontario is literacy and basic. Like, But this isn't really my topic, right? Like I'm not, this is... I'm trying to capture the attention of teachers, right? Grade seven, eight teachers. So what if I just go grade seven, eight intermediate lesson plans? All right, so if I search that, so this isn't about the curriculum anymore. This is more about lesson plan. Let, let's go with broad match, uh, grade eight. What if I go intermediate lesson plan? Ooh, I'm getting some research here. ESL, okay, so I don't want ESL. So I can actually exclude that, right? So I excluded ESL. So free English lesson plans. So now I have 131 keywords, um, business English. Okay, so I'm gonna now export all these. Let's just export that. All right. Uh, and what I'm going to do, here's my CSV, right? And so if you're just joining us, you're just watching this part, I'm walking you through something that I will do for you. 500 reports I'm trying to give away. So I'll do a keyword report like what I'm doing. Uh, watch the beginning of this video to find out how to get that. I just exported the CSV, right? So basically, I'll play around with the data for about 30 minutes. So, all right. So here I have a bunch of stuff. I'm going to export this. Uh, let's paste it in here. All right. So paste. There we go. Get rid of this title heading. All right. Uh, and then what I do, I want to get rid of some duplicates. So I just go, let's see, select that data, data cleanup, remove duplicates. Data has heading rows, um, select all, remove duplicates. There we go. Boom. All right. So I got rid of 11 duplicates. I see here a keyword title. Let's get rid of that. All right. So now comes to the fun part. I mean, fun part for me because I love 
you know, data. Uh, now what I'm going to do, I just make sure over here on the side here, I have difficult rating. Okay, so a couple of things. Volume is search per month. Keyword difficulty. Oh, see, there's uh, this data here. So um, it's doing a broad match. It's doing like how related are these terms? And so this won't be a problem for you. But um, what I need to do is I need to shift these things over. So I'm going to shift them over. This happened before in the past. Delete cells, shift cells, and shift left. Okay, so what I have over here, and now I just lost this. All right. Um, so boop, 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 boop. there we go. Okay. So I have here search by volume, right? And what I can do is I can do data, sort the range, advanced sort, search by volume, go in from largest to smallest. So the largest volume here is Ontario math curriculum. That doesn't apply to me at all because I'm not a math teacher. I probably should have gotten rid of that. So um, I might. So this is something when you get the report from me, you can sort of go through and delete some things, right? Alberta curriculum, that doesn't apply to me. Alberta, I know that doesn't apply to me. So I'm just deleting the row. Alberta. So this is just, um, these are probably related keywords that sort of popped in here, right? New Learn Alberta. Nope, not for me. Uh, gov curriculum, government. So curriculum, yeah, but I'm not going to search for that because this curriculum word has 720 people searching for it. The difficulty rating is 74, which is ridiculously hard for new TPT blogs. Like, so for context, uh, I have a website maybe 10, 13 years on the run. Lie on, on the run. Um, I don't update it as much anymore. I was able to get to the first page um, for a keyword difficulty that's 74, right? But if for a new website, you're looking for things that are like 20 to 30 in this keyword difficulty, super easy, right? But when we chat, we're looking for a keyword strategy to go for 40 to 50, right? Because in the long game, like we're going for something that's a little bit out of reach, we create, and that's called a key, keystone content. So for context, if I go to reading strategies, so this is what we're building here, right? So if I have a niche website, my main keystone content that I'm going for is reading comprehension strategy. The long tail keyword here is reading comprehension strategy PDF, which is easier to get. But fortunately, the smaller keyword that I'm going for, reading comprehension strategy, is in there. So this is the keyword that I'm going for. And all of this sub stuff, right, like active questions or asking questions, making connections, those are all smaller keystone content pages that all point up to a pyramid. So my website needs to be a popularity content so that when people land here, they know instantly reading comprehension strategies PDF, that's an important topic over here. And basically, I'm selling my TPT product, right? So I'm becoming a niche expert in this, and I'm driving my own traffic to my TPT store. Pro tip on your TPT blog, when you link to your store, you always link it on a new window, because if they're like, oh, I don't want that, and they close it, they pop back to your website, right? So that you haven't actually lost them here. So the game plan, the game plan for me is to figure out the cornerstone strategy to be able to rank for this keyword. And then underneath that, I write a bunch of different stuff. And so for me, for the curriculum, what I'm going to do is like, I'm going to have up here probably learning like whatever the new curriculum is. And then I'm going to hit each curriculum strand so a teacher can dive into the curriculum strand and then say, what? This relates to me perfectly. And then I'm going to send them to my teacher's pay teacher store. Right. So I have a freebie because freebies are important. So make sure that you and I probably will put this on the front page. Um, but if I go by most recent, the freebie people want free. Alex Hermosi talks about this, too. When he works with his portfolio of companies, he says, like, yeah, if, if like basically if you're running ten thousand dollars in ads and you're running to a freebie and you're doing this and that, I can probably fix your your and it's a grand slam offer. I can fix your ads in whatever a couple of, in 10 minutes. But the idea is go with that freebie, right? So I have this freebie um, and uh, I'm not logged in. So I, oh, no, that's most recent. Hello. Oh, it's not. <gasps> Wait a second. Sorry. <clears throat> when you do most recent for people who are watching, do you get your freebie showing up at the top? Because, um, I just published a most recent product, which is my Ontario and it's free, but it didn't show up at the top, which was a new experience for me. Sorry. Okay. So I have a freebie. Make sure you have a freebie on your blog and my freebie. So my strategy here is I am upselling my freebie 
to my main selling products, right? So this is my Ontario curriculum freebie. It has all the curriculum strategies that I made nice posters for. It's the Edgy Circles unofficial guide. But then on my first page, I have upsells to my main stuff that I'm trying to sell. And when I put this out, I noticed that I sold my growth mindset uh, bundle. And I also sold my everything bundle. And that's what I'm trying to upsell to. So on my blog, when I do my keystone research, I'm trying to make sure that all paths lead, like I'm being strategic. I'm trying to sell you on, on these big selling products. And I know that if my if I do my keyword research right, and I hit the new Ontario curriculum, then I'll be able to help more teachers find my products and it fits exactly to the curriculum. And then I hope some of them will become TPT sellers. So if you're watching this and you're in Ontario and you want to become a TPT seller, come say hi. Um, okay, so I get rid of stuff that don't relate, relate to me, math, login, right? So I can do this uh, program, Alberta. All right, so basically I can see right away, although, I started thinking, yes, Ontario Language Curriculum 2023 has, um, right, that has 390 searches per month right now. The keyword difficulty is 34. So if I optimize for Ontario Language Curriculum 2023, I will probably do quite well. Sam Rush thinks it's navigational, which is true, right? People are looking for the actual curriculum. But if I actually provide value and say, hey, here's how you can teach uh, intermediate stuff to this new curriculum, I think I'll get some people interested. Um, something in here, when I do your research for you, so over here I have graph, graphs. Okay, so pivot table with commercial intent, I can see what people are looking for in terms of like, okay, Samrush thinks if you're searching for this keyword, you're intending to buy something. So for example, Ontario and elementary curriculum, People run ads. So the average cost per click on Ontario elementary curriculum, I'm not spending a dollar, a dollar, four cents, but other people are running ads on this, right? Math in Ontario. Uh, so I might look in here, I might think, okay, well, some of these don't apply to me, but some of these, um, like Ontario elementary curriculum, yeah, that the people are running. So Ontario Elementary Language Curriculum, grade six, seven, eight, that might be something to consider. If I look at volume, so this is purely, I'm looking for outliers, right? So this one up here, Ontario Curriculum, it's super easy between 20 to 40 to be able to go for that. Ontario Curriculum. So I'm going to go Ontario Curriculum. I'm going to say yes. Um, if I go for Ontario Curriculum, I can probably get Ontario Language Curriculum 2023. So I'm going to go for Ontario Language Curriculum 2023, but I'm also include Ontario Curriculum. And in here, I'm going to put lesson plans. So it's obvious that um, I'm selling for lessons. Okay, so let's do some more analysis here. Uh, if I go back to the volume outliers, this one's interesting. Curriculum, I'm not going to go for that because that's just too vague. It's not going to help me. Um, what's this one here? Ontario Language Curriculum, that's Ontario Curriculum. So if I go logarithmic, it sort of spreads it out. So this is teasing out the data. And the goal here is we're looking for keywords that are high for search volume and relatively easy between 20 to 40. Ontario language curriculum, Ontario curriculum documents. Those are people looking for the actual curriculum. I'll link to that because then when I link on my blog, you want to make sure you have at least one outbound link to a credible source. So because otherwise it looks spammy. Uh, so Ontario curriculum language. Okay. If I go with a cost per click analysis, what are people renew by science? Yeah, I'm not going to, that doesn't apply to me. Uh, these are all too squished down here, so I can't really see anything. So I'm going to go with the logarithmic scale, uh, which teases it out a little bit, but not because that renew by science is skewing things so much. So I'm going to go to the data. I'm going to find renew by science. I'm going to get rid of this because it's skewing my data. Let's delete that. Here we go. Um, all right, here's the logarithmic. So now if I go by cost per click, all right, learn education, K to six. Uh, yeah, nothing in here really. I'm looking for a high volume, low competition, right? Education curriculum, that's already on my radar. So what I've now done as a result of this data analysis, all right, I'm gonna go after Ontario curriculum. I'm gonna go after Ontario language curriculum. That's really what I wanna do because Ontario curriculum could be like math, it could be science. So I'm going to go Ontario language curriculum 2023. And so what I'm going to do on my notes over here. Um, so, so my cornerstone, cornerstone content 
is Ontario language curriculum, uh, lesson plans, right? And that, oops, whether it's lesson plans, Ontario language curriculum, uh, I want Ontario language curriculum to be at the top because it catches their attention. Lesson plans I'll put at the end. And then all I will do is I'm going to go in a previous episode. I walked us through how to do this. It's in one of the live streams. Uh, I'm going to go Monster Insight Headlines. And I'm going to go to the Headline Analyzer, which is a free tool. I'm going to type in my, uh, my potential topic here. It's going to give me a score out of 45. And then I'm going to try to improve this. And then that becomes my blog post title. And then I write that content, right? And so for those of you who are just jumping in, for those of you who are watching here, if I go to youtube.com at SEOTpreneur, if I scroll down here, it says live stream show. Okay, so this is how five people, um, one of these, where are you? Um, oh, I think it's the most recent one over here. So if I go to live streams, if I go over here, uh, see success on TPT, how to get around the hidden bundles, tell Google what to say, TP, like this is how people find your blogs. So in one of the live stream episodes, I walk us through how to use that headline tool. It is the coolest thing ever and it's free. And that's how I'm going to come up with my blog post title. I'm going to write the blog post in a Google Doc. And then next time, I'm going to show you how I'm going to put it into a Google Doc and optimize for that. If you have questions, ask in the comments. We ended with four people. Thank you so much for watching. If you're watching the replay, leave a comment. Um, this is an experiment doing a live stream because I get the information out to you quicker, but I'm also interrupting some of you with your emails and the notifications. So let me know in the comments whether this is a good way. If you want me to continue this live stream format, right now the format we have is on Saturdays at 9.15. I do a TPT blog live stream on Tuesdays in the middle of the day, which is 8 p.m. for Arika. We do one for TPT beginner sales. And I'm thinking about starting a live stream for TPT hamsters where I talk about what I'm doing on my blog or what I'm doing that I don't talk about other places. So what I'm doing with Facebook ads, what I'm doing with Google ads, which probably won't work, but I'm spending $600 in ads to learn and grow, right? So if you're interested in me starting a third live stream theory series for higher level TPT hamster stuff, that I don't recommend for TPT sellers beginning the game. Don't do ads if you're a TPT tadpole, um, right? If you're interested in that, leave a message and I will see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Have a great week. Bye-bye. And stream. Woo